Why, hello there, and welcome to another episode of the Big Microcontroller Tutorial Series. In this episode, we will be covering the I.O. pins. So what are I.O. pins? An I.O. pin allows the microcontroller to interface with input components or modules like keypads, switches, and a lot of sensor modules available in the market today. It also allows the same pin to interface with output components or modules like light emitting diode or LED, LCDs, buzzers, etc. The simplest function of an I.O. pin is a digital I.O. which senses binary states 0 and 1, 0 for the off state and 1 for the on state. But aside from this function, a pin may also have alternate functions, which depends on the available peripherals of the device. For now, I will be focusing on the simplest function of the pin. The alternate functions specific to this chip will be discussed on the later part of the series. Now let's put our focus on pin 38, which is RB5 of the microcontroller. Before we can begin using RB5 as a digital I.O., we need to set its pin direction. Should we use it as an input, or should it function as an output? The TRIS register is where we set the pin direction of the pin, with bit 0 as the least significant bit and bit 7 as the most significant bit. The binary status on the TRIS bit that means if its corresponding point bit should be output or not. Let's now put our focus on bit 5, which could be RB5 or bit 5 of port B. Say we put binary state 1 and trace bit 5, this will make the pin an input. So any value or binary state that could be run from the pin would be saved in port bit 5. If we put binary state 0 in trace bit 5, any value that we save in port bit 5 would be reflected on the pin, making the pin an output. Let's now proceed with our hands-on exercise. You ready? For our first exercise, we will focus on making a pin function as an output. Attached to the pin will be an LED, which would blink with a frequency of 1 Hz, 50% duty. For our second exercise, we will be adding a button to the circuit above. The button will be attached to a pin which will function as an input. When the button is pressed, the LED will turn on, and when it is released, the LED will turn off. Let's begin. Here I have pic 16 f 877 a and we have a light emitting diode attached to pin 38 or RB5 of the MCU. We will be using this circuit later to simulate the behavior of our microcontroller. I just created a new project using MPLAB X IDE. This is where we will be coding all the instructions for our MCU. First, let's set the pin as an output. MPLAB has an autocomplete feature so when you type, a drop-down list would appear where you can select the keyword that you are typing. Next, let's create an infinite loop. Let us set a value of 1 so it will loop forever. And then inside the loop, we are going to set the pin either high or low, which would in turn turn on or turn off the LED. A delay needs to be added before the pin changes state. So for this one, RB5 is 0, meaning the pin is low, the LED is off. After 500 milliseconds, RB5 will then be assigned with 1, allowing the pin to go high, hence turning on the LED. Now we are ready to simulate the program that we have made. So let's double-click the pin, and then let's load it. Okay. And then press play. As you can see, the LED is now turning on and turning off every 500 milliseconds. 
the duration of the LEDs on state or off state can be adjusted by increasing or decreasing the parameter in the delay function. Now let's go to our second exercise. I have updated the previous circuit to include a push button which is connected to RB0 while retaining the LED to use it as an output. Now to update the code. Let's now initialize trace B0 as an input. So we have here trace B0 is equals to 1. Now let's update the while loop such that when the switch is depressed, the LED would turn on. Otherwise, the LED would remain off. So we have if RB0 is 1, then we would set RB5 to 1. Otherwise, RB5 would be set to 0. So there we have it. Okay, now let's start building and see if it would successfully build. There. Now let's begin simulating the code that we just programmed and see if the circuit will function as we expected it to. So when I press the switch, the LED need to turn on, and when I release it, it should turn off. See? Okay. On, off, on, off. There we have it. I think we are done. Congratulations, guys. You just created your first embedded software. If you want to be updated on my upcoming videos, just hit the subscribe button below. Thanks.